In this edition of Style City, we are at the restaurant Bar and Grill in the heart of Liverpool, and we are going bridal crazy. That is because it is the official launch of the first ever bridal collection from Liverpool designer Shishaya. As well as that, we're going to look at bridal makeup tips, we're going to look at hair extension, and so much more. This is Style City. Welcome to Style City with me, Ellie Phillips, here on Bay TV Liverpool. In this edition, we are here at the restaurant Bar and Grill because, as you can see, we are preparing for a big fashion show. It's a ladies' lunch and fashion show launching a designer collection. In fact, it's a bridal designer collection from Liverpool designer Shishaya. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So let's start as we mean to go on by having a sneaky peek at some of the highlights and meeting the woman behind the brand. It is such a great day here, and I'm joined by the designer herself now, Jess. Jess, tell us, you've been designing forever, haven't you? It's always been your thing. Yeah, I do. I really love it. I love all anything that's a little bit different that makes you stand out from someone else. Now, yeah. I've seen your dresses before, not your bridal stuff, but your other dresses, and they're so full of detail. And everything you do is, is really personable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I like doing things for like the individual yeah. and making them stand out and making them feel special. Yeah, because everyone, 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 yeah. everyone's different, aren't they? And everyone's Definitely. different shapes and sizes. Have you had someone come into the shop before and be really scared about having something outlandish or something different to what you usually go to and then have the result at the end and they're like, oh my God, this is absolutely amazing. Does yeah, it happen all, all the time? Yeah, it does, it does. Because so, we do change it along the way from what it initially started. Obviously, when you start trying it on and seeing different things and seeing what works for your body shape, really. Yeah. And it, so you can change along the way. Amazing. So it's not just coming in and picking one dress. It's like they come in and it really is a bespoke tailored service from start to finish. Yeah, but it's just work with me. Obviously, I work with the individual um, and then they just work with me and we just go together with it really. Yeah, amazing. So today is very exciting because today you're launching your first bridal collection, aren't you? Yes, I am. And what made you want to go into brides? What was what was the what was the attraction to you? Um just a lot of the my customers were starting asking me to, to do it. To do it really. <laughs> the they, demand liked, was yeah, there. they liked all the detail in the dresses, they wanted to take that into the wedding dresses, so yeah, I'll give it a well, go. Well, I have seen some of these uh, before and I am dying to show everyone at home watching. So let's take a look at some of the designs that we're showing here today. Okay, so Jess, we've got our first beautiful model, Rebecca, showcasing one of these stunning designs. Tell us about this because it's absolutely insane. So we started off with the hand embellished belt, which was designed by one of my customers, um, Charlotte. She fell in love with the design and wanted me to hand make it for her, which is what it is. And then I just felt like it needed a bit more sparkle on this dress, so I put that with that one as well. So it started with a belt. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. With, yeah, it started with the belt, and then I was mixing them up things, and I thought it looked really nice with this one. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, it is so detailed. I mean, you'll see this at home. It's just got so much going into it here. And, and in terms of body shape, if someone was going to go for this, who would you say this would be better for? Well, you've got to have a good set, set of hips, really, to, um, and then nice little waist just to emphasise your waist with the belt, or you can add the belt if you don't feel like you have yeah. got. So this is good for kind of like, say, an hourglass shave or in, in, even like a pear shape. Yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Rebecca, it's absolutely stunning on you. So don't stand, <laughs> don't stand too close. Don't stand too close. Okay, let's take a look at the next design. Okay, so Jess, this is design number two. Absolutely stunning once again. And this is very different because this isn't a traditional colour, is it? No, not at all. But a lot of the people who are asking me to make the bespoke bridal, they want to step away from the traditional yes. wedding dress. They want something a little bit different. And not everybody just want to wear white or ivory on the day. No. So 
I quite like the uh, it's still quite a romantic color to go for the pink blush yeah so that's why I choose this one it's absolutely beautiful and obviously you've got a beautiful red hair as well that complements so well doesn't Definitely. it it's colors that you have to look for when you're going for a wedding dress is it is it a good idea not to just go for white if you've got a different hair color yeah, definitely. I think everybody suits certain specific colour themselves. Not every colour is for everyone, really. Well, this is absolutely stunning. And again, a similar shape to the last one, so I'm assuming that it's the same kind of body shape that we go for. With yeah, it as definitely. Well. Amazing. It's gone a little bit risky with this. Obviously, the petal details just emphasises the hips and things. If you do feel like you need a little bit more of a hip going on, we can kind of emphasise it with the details in the dress. Tailor it to the client. Yeah. I love it. Okay, let's have a look at the last design. So Jess, we've got Sophie in our last look. Tell us about this because this is this is very daring, isn't it? It is a bit <laughs> risky this one. Um, just something a little bit different again, trying to step away from the norm. Um, yeah, just like the little details, a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of something different going on in the middle. And then the nice little horsehair curls on the bottom. It's absolutely stunning. But again, if someone was loving this, but you know, thought, I'm not that risque, is there anything you could do with it for them specifically? Yeah, to kind of course. Of I mean, everybody, if you wanted more covering up, we can change it to tailor it to you, as you say, whatever you want. Anything that you want to change is totally flexible. It's absolutely stunning. Absolutely love all of these dresses. Jess, well done with all of this and good luck with it. If people at home want to get in touch with you to book a consultation how can they do that they can book the free hours consultation on the website at www.shishay.com <laughs> lovely good luck with everything and we'll see you very soon thank you massive thank you to jess and of course the beautiful models there from chic and don't forget you could win one of chiche's dresses not one of the bridal ones but one from her bespoke party collection they're absolutely stunning all you need to do if you have a chance of winning one of those is get onto our twitter right now style city elfful find the competition tweet and retweet it it's as simple as that right now though let's find out what our style scouts found out and about in the city so it's a tartan scarf i've got a trench coat on beige color i've got a a t-shirt <laughs> and black skinny jeans and some studded black boots. Um, what colour would you call this? Mm, Bordeaux? Blood red. Blood, blood red scarf. Wow. <laughs> Maroon. Maroon That's better. It, yeah. uh, black top leather jacket, ripped jeans, some old shoes, <laughs> not great socks, <laughs> um, and a grey leather bag. Fashion pet hits. Mm. Uh, Rocks. Yeah, Crocs. Um, sandals with socks. Yeah. Um, leggings without a long top. Um, a stra a um, strapless top with straps bra. It's a bad thing. Oh, sorry. And um, a bright coloured bra under a white top. And Pinterest, Instagram. Instagram, Facebook. yeah. I'm from shopping online at, the, at my favourite places, seeing what they put together, their ideas. Yeah. Well, I wear night shoes, I wear them because they're comfortable. Um, I wear in a car hot coat because it's warm, that's really it. And a thrasher hoodie because it's comfortable as well. Mostly just for being like a student, I just want to be as comfortable as possible. Um, well, on an average day, yeah, if I was going out to wear something more smart, but like we've been in uni all day, I'd rather just be smart, uh, comfortable. Chinos. And that's probably really it. Yeah. I'm not really bothered to what people wear. Not really, just like skateboard stuff is comfortable and looks nice. Or like smart clothes, like pop boutique type stuff. Oh gosh, uh, Jimmy Two wedges, um, River Island jeans, H&M t-shirt, and a jacket that I wore when I was abroad. <laughs> uh, no, not really. Wear what you want. That's what always looks good. No, just tend to just go with what I think is all right and what I like. So no, I don't follow any fashion. I'm too old. <laughs> um, well, these are just I've just got these pants from like M and S, um, and then this is from like New Look, and the jackets from New Look as well. <laughs> um, Boohoo, New Look, and River Islands, and River Islands sunglasses as well. Um, crop tops. Weirdly, I know everyone's wearing them, but I really don't like them. Oh, I'd probably have to say Crocs, actually. Crocs, oh my god. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I usually like, I follow like uh, new look and like top shops and things on like uh, Instagram, so I usually just like look at like what the people are wearing on there and then base it off that kind of thing. I've got to be honest, if I could dress like Kendall Jenner or someone, like <laughs> that would be ideal. 
Uh, what I'm wearing, well, you know, just a long coat, a jumper, t-shirt inside, uh, just trousers, blue trainers, I guess. It's what I wear in like winter times, I guess, like as usually, if it's like summer, I just take this off and just wear the jumper instead. Crocs, sandals. I don't like sandals. I don't like seeing like feet. Feet annoys me. Uh, what else? Beanie indoors. I don't. I don't get that. It's why. Unless you're hiding a bad hair, which I do sometimes, but it's fine. Yeah. I'd like to say my granddad, but like it's, it's not <laughs> something cool. But like you know, I like the way he dresses. Smart. Yeah. Uh, got a sort of like, I don't even know, it's kind of like a leather jacket on, it's nice and warm for the winter because it is absolutely freezing today. Um, I've got a ridiculously long top on that's kind of like a maxi dress um, that's from Represent and then I've got um, some ripped jeans that I got off eBay for about 18 quid from China. Cracking, bargain. Yeah, yeah, pretty much like, to be honest, most days I'm in work so I have to wear stuff without a label on it and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty much longer fit stuff, nice thick stuff, keep warm and that's about it. Not really, apart from just saw a guy with peroxide blonde hair. Yeah, not a fan, not a fan. It tends to be websites for clothing, like there's a, a brand called Represent and I pretty much just follow their styling and I'll fight, like I'll go on eBay, that's where I get most of my clothing, just type in long line men's and that's pretty much it. A big thank you to our Style Scouts there, finding some great finds as always. Stay right where you are because after the break we'll be meeting the star of Britain's next top model. She's called Jenna McMahon and she's a Scouser. As well as that we'll be getting tips from Russianology about hair extensions and finding out about bridal makeup. Welcome back to Style City with me, Ellie Phillips, here on Bay TV Liverpool. We are at the restaurant Bar and Grill in the heart of Liverpool City Centre because it is the official launch of the very first bridal collection from Liverpool designer She Shea. So we've got loads to come up on the show, including meeting Jenna, star of Britain's Next Top Model. But first, let's get some tips from the pros. So we are here at the restaurant Bar and Grill and we are talking all things bridal. So I'm joined by makeup artist Sarah Shannon and our beautiful model Regina as well. Okay, so Sarah, tell us, what are brides looking for at the moment? So this year, all the brides are asking for a perfect matte lip. Right. And so going down the Kylie Jenner route, so everyone wants that full nude lip, but something that's going to last all day without constantly reapplying oh. the gloss over and over again. Yeah. So we're looking at a nude matte lip. Yes. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, so tell us what products do we need to do this? Um, so I love Myth. You can't go wrong with Myth from MAC. And so it's really a really plain nude, but it's not too nude where the lips look washed out. Yeah, like completely gone. And then we're going to use two different sets of liners. So we'll use a nude liner called Whirl okay. and then Cork just to give the lips a little back, bit of dimension. And is it true that some celebrities use this one specifically? Yeah, obviously like Kylie Jenner again, like <laughs> I said, everyone's going for the craze. Whirl liner is one of the most popular ones. Okay. It's always out of stock, which oh. shows that it's a good liner. So get on the waiting list <laughs> yeah, for this Yeah, get one. on the waiting list for Whirl. Okay, so we know that the, the lipstick we want and the liner, what are we going to use to apply the other stuff with? So over the top, um, we use a, a powder, so an eyeshadow, a loose powder, anything like that. Um, it doesn't really matter which powder you can use, yeah. um, depending on which new, how nude you want to go. Um, I like to use a light pink, okay. so just so the lips aren't too washed out. But if you are using a brown one, then I'd say use a loose powder over the top so there's no colour there. Okay, so brown, you get a sheer kind of a loose powder look, yep. really neutral. And then if you're going to go with... For um, a little bit of a pinker tone, use a pink shadow. Perfect yep. stuff. And what are you going to use to apply that with? Um, just a fluffy brush, so any kind of brush, but just make sure the ends are quite fluffy so it's not too packed on, so it just kind of brushes over the top. Okay, well I'm going to leave you to do the lips. So this is the final look on Regina, looks absolutely amazing. And Sarah, is this going to last all day? Of course, you get at least 24 hours out of the application. Um, more if you're not kissing all day. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking, it is actually waterproof. Amazing. So you can drink, kiss, do what you like all day and it won't budge. So you don't need to drink through a straw, it's still going to be there. It's still going to be there yeah. at the end of the night. But just make sure you don't tempt it to put gloss on throughout the night because the matte product with the gloss, it will get clogger. Yeah. So no gloss. If we're going for the matte look, stay matte all day. Stick with it, don't get tempted yeah. to move away from that. But drinking from champagne glasses, that's Perfect all okay. Yeah. Great story. So Sarah, if anyone wants to find out more about you, book in with you or even see some more of the other makeup looks that you do, how can they do that? Um, so you can catch me on Instagram um, and my page is that makeup page. Great. Girls, thank you so much. 
So here at the restaurant, Bar and Grill in the city centre, we are talking all things bridal, and all brides want to have fabulous hair on their wedding day. And of course, a lot of them are interested in hair extension. So we've got the lovely ladies from Russianology here to tell us a bit more about it. We've got Tanya and we've got Holly. Holly, tell us a bit more about extensions. Brides tend to want really thick hair on their wedding day, don't they? So especially for men, it's like a big, a big, a big thing. Yeah. For minute, you know, even if you just want it in for the, for the day. day. You know, we can customise the clippings at the minute. A lot of people are going for that. Yeah. It's um, quick and easy then, isn't it? Yeah. And it just adds that bit of volume. Bit of volume, yes. feel a little bit more glam, a little yeah. bit more. But some people do want it to last a lot longer. Yeah. And you do offer that as well. And it's a really special yeah. way that you do this, isn't it? It's yeah, called so micro? Right? Yeah, it's called, so it's called a micro weft sort of known as an LED. Okay. So basically, the time is going to do a demonstration yep. today. Yep. So it's like a semi-permanent where you're putting them into every six to eight weeks. You take them out, put a new set in. But it offers more of a permanent look, look yeah. all the time. Like I've got it in at the minute. And it's amazing. Like you can't tell. It just in. looks really thick and nice. Yeah. In fact, I don't really want to stand next to you. Like, <laughs> I need to wear some. Now, Claire's got really long hair. Our beautiful model Claire here today. She's got really long hair. It's slightly thinner. So she just wants this for the volume, doesn't she? Yeah, so today we're just putting a piece in which is exactly the same length as Claire's hair. We're just going to add a little bit of thickness because, you know, you don't always want the extensions yeah. for just the length. It's yeah. not just all about both. Because everyone used to think about that, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, I want these really, really long hair. Yeah. But it's not about that now, is it? Every other girl now has hair extensions in the hair, whether it's short like yourself, whether yeah. it's long like me. It's just, Don't worry, yeah. I am going to get some of these done <laughs> in. I want some volume going on too. But here with Claire today, so Tanya's just going to demonstrate now how a single one's put in, because a lot of people worry that hair extensions are so damaging. Yeah. But this technique really isn't, is it? Yeah. So any technique that we, technique that we use at Oceanology, we use because it's not damaging right. to the hair. So as you'll be able to see in a minute, once Tanya's put the ring in, it's like a small copper ring yeah. with a silicone ring inside it yep. so it just kind of hooks the hair rather than pulls Pull or no, no glue no heat none of that no plaques nothing yeah and then what we do we just sew the hair the hair extension underneath the okay. ring so, so it's the ring that it's holding on to. The ring that it's holding on to. Okay, great. So it. we're looking at Claire here to hair now, yeah. uh, and Tanya's just put one in, and it's that quick and easy to have it in. Yeah. And as you can see, it's really flat to the head and stuff, isn't yeah. it? So it lies, so that means when the piece of extension goes in, when the weft goes in, it lies completely flat. flat. There's no bulk, bulkiness, there's no, when you're tying your hair up, you can't see it. It's yeah. great. Okay, great. great. Well, we're going to leave uh, Claire, our beautiful model, in the capable hands of Tanya and see how this goes. Okay, Holly, so Tanya put all the individuals in, but then she did something else at the end, didn't she? Yeah, so basically, after she's put all the individuals or whatever that coming around, she's put then sewn the weft underneath the rings. So there's no tugging on her own hair, it's just all, anyway, so the weft is all sitting on the rings. It's absolutely gorgeous, it's just yeah. absolutely stunning, and it, the length yeah. is perfect, the colour is a perfect match, because yeah. I know you guys focus a lot on that type of thing. Let's have a look and see what it looks like when it's completely down as well, because that is the final effect where it's all everything's together and it's all showing the thickness that'll be absolutely gorgeous so if someone wanted to contact you to find out more come for a consultation how can they do that uh, best what best thing to say is go to russianology.com.uk yeah. and then all of our contact details are on their email social media that's the best way to go amazing that. stuff girls thank yeah. you so much for demonstrating thank this to you. us a big thank you to the girls at Russianology there and of course to our makeup artist Sarah Shannon for those tips for brides. Right now though, it's time to meet Jenna McMahon, star of Britain's Next Top Model for this edition's Celeb Style. So when we think of Scout models, we automatically think of Abby Clancy. And in fact, she hosts Britain's Next Top Model. But we have got a rising star who also starred in Britain's Next Top Model. We have got Jenna Whitman. Jenna, thank you so much for chatting to us. So let's start from the beginning. How did you get into modeling? Because you're still so young. Yeah. Um... Well, I was supposed to be getting headshots taken in the college for dance, so I got a few done and then the photographer asked me if I ever modeled before and I was like, no, no. not really, <laughs> like definitely not and she's like, you should look into it. So then I signed with an agency for like about six months and it didn't really go anywhere to be honest and then I, I just left it for a while and then I realised me singing teacher put on our wall um, like the application for Britain Tech Top Models. 
school and my mate and my sister were like, go, 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 like apply. And I was like, oh, I don't know, because I haven't done that much fun yeah. then. But then I applied and then just got through all the rounds. And so how many rounds are there before you make it into that final number? Um, well, there was application rounds, which is just filling in like your name, a few headshots. Yeah. And then it was video rounds, you have to like video yourself in like your surrounds. And so I did it in uni and it was like a pure home video, like, oh really? Right. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I love that. Uh, and then I got a call like a couple of weeks later. It was like weeks, like you ring and be like, you're free to the next round. And then it was producer rounds, you had to go meet the producers, but not the judges. Okay. And then that was a bit like nerve wracking. Yeah. And then I got the call, it says in final 15, and he wanted me to go to London. And I was like, I was just getting prank calls. I was like, no, yeah. no way. And so for the show, obviously, did you have to go permanently down to London? Was it you? Was it yeah. like complete? That was it. That was that your was life it. then. Yeah. Everything else had to be put to the side. Yeah. Um, final 15, we went down and filmed, and then when the three girls went home, we came home for three days, and then we went back and stayed. So you had a little bit of a break. Yeah. So what was it like? What were the other girls like? Were I they... met like three like really good friends. Like I speak to them every day. We've got a WhatsApp group going. Love them. We speak every day. <laughs> Um, the other girls were fine, like we had a few arguments you've probably seen on the show. Did you get scouts on them and were you like, yeah. bring it? Oh, do you know what? The only time I had an argument was when I had my pink curls in. I was yeah. like, typical scouts. Yeah, but, <laughs> I remember them. Yeah. But, yeah, that's good. No, they were all lovely. And obviously, but, Abby, Abby Clancy, yeah. she hosts the show. What's she like? She is the nicest person you'll ever come across. Really? Like, when I first met, it was on our Reebok shoot, and I was like, she's so tall, and she's tiny. And I was like, oh my god. And I gave her a hug, and I was like, when does this end? <laughs> Oh, but um, she was lovely. Like she gave us so like such good advice. Like yeah. just be yourself. And yeah. So you you say you started off and you you were dancing. You had no dream to be a model. But now that you've done Britain's Next Top Model, is that something you really want to pursue even further? Yeah, definitely. Like it was dance all the way, dance, dance, dance. Because I've done that since I was like three. Yeah. But now, well, to be fair, my agency that I'm with now is a dance and model. Brilliant. So I can do a bit of both, which is good. But I really want to be a bit more of a model. And when you talk about modelling, there are actually so many types of modelling. What's the yeah, type of modelling exactly. that you want to get into? Um, do you just want to try I it just all? want to try everything. <laughs> I keep saying that, but I just want to try a bit of everything. And maybe like some telly, telly stuff as well. Yeah. Like, but see what my has like. Yeah. Well. It was very exciting. Yes. We loved Britain's Next Top oh, Model when you. you were in it, of course. <laughs> um, best of luck with the future, Jen. Thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you. A big thank you to the gorgeous Jenna McMahon for chatting to us here on Style City. Well, that is nearly it, but before I go, I need to remind you that our competition this edition is amazing. It is a chance to win a bespoke dress made by Shishaya, the incredible designer that we've featured in this edition. All you need to do to get involved is get on Twitter, find us at Style City El Pool, find the competition tweet and retweet it. It's as simple as that. And one of those beautiful dresses could be yours. A big thank you to everyone here at the restaurant bar and grill, to Chic Networking and of course to Shishaya, all our gorgeous models and everyone involved in this edition. Thank you so much and we will see you next time on Style City.